day six, part two. Um, I am not in the best of um, moods at the moment. I took a walk to shake it off. Um, I'm better than I was about an hour ago, but um, I'm going to try to not drop any names. Well, I won't drop a name. And then here I go preserving someone else's identity when I was reneged on. Okay, so. <laughs> when doing IVF, there are uh, lots of moving parts, okay? And sometimes you know exactly what you're doing when you're doing it. Sometimes you don't know. You're following along from your doctor's pattern. Sometimes they send you to someone else to get a second opinion. So I've had echocardiograms, 2D echoes. Um, I've had a psychiatric clearing. I had to, they had to make sure, you know, I was a cuckoo up there and that I understand that this sperm is from someone I don't know personally and you know the ramifications of that how am I gonna tell the child um, lots of things and my facility covers a lot of stuff there's also some things that they don't tell you because either they don't know it depends on how you respond to your stems right now I'm doing stems and I don't have specific dates okay but I have been trying to make sure that I secure what and who I need according to what I do know. If it's a 24 hour window, if it's a 36 hour window, if it's a week window, when you need something or someone, you just do your best you can to make sure that you're gonna be covered. And I no longer have that. So I'm moving to a plan, an alternate plan, and it's rather difficult because again, I don't always have exact dates. I don't always have exact times. I can give a frame and um, I call myself, fuck it, okay, fuck it. I secured a transportation frame of time with someone who has the freedom to take off a morning or move them around a morning whatever and um, I found out by happenstance and almost by accident that the person is leaving town it's right at the cusp of the window of my egg aspiration and the egg is then going to be fertilized when that egg is fertilized and it starts making cells it's becoming a blastocyst and then an embryo and that embryo is going to be transferred back into me this is a window of three to five days I specifically asked for a window of time knowing that I will only have a 36 hour window from the booster shot, I'm sorry, not booster shot, trigger shot. When my doctor says, hey, Kimberly, really take your trigger shot. I've got 36 hours to be in the facility. I must arrive with someone, I must leave with someone. Per contract, per everything I've signed, per every release, I am not allowed to arrive alone, I'm not allowed to leave alone, I'm not allowed to ride or arrive or leave via Uber or Lyft. It is not allowed. So, I secured my uh, this time frame and the person is leaving town right at the cusp 
Um, I did not know this until a couple of days ago, but what hit me today was that I wasn't told, hey, you know, check this out. Um, oh, by the way, uh, my schedule got flipped, uh, arrangements, plans got flipped, and I'm now leaving town. So no one has to ask me permission to do nothing. Everybody's grown. I called myself securing this weeks ago, and now I'm adding up that it looks like that plan has been in place probably since I asked, if not right after I asked. My grandmother always told me, Kim, don't, know nobody, don't nobody owe you nothing. Very effing true. I had an elder tell me, if anybody does anything for you, consider it a gift. Very true, because no one has to do anything for you. I'm trying to live between my moral and my value and me just being pissed off. That's, and that's the space that I'm in. I will not lose. It's gonna happen. And I'm trying not to trip because I know I'm gonna get to where I need to get to when I need to get there and get back and then get back again. I know that's gonna happen. But I'm still pissed in the meantime. You know what I'm saying? And now I gotta stand up here and give myself a shot. Two shots. And I got five minutes, six to nine. I gotta do two shots. One of these meds is brand new. But we gonna keep it moving, cause that's my name, K-I-M. I keep it moving by choice and by no choice much at all, because that's my name, that's what I'm gonna do. I always have a choice, but I'm gonna be purposeful with mine. <sighs> Set myself for the new one first. I'm going to give it to myself after. Don't let nobody keep you from living. Don't let nobody keep you from anything. Don't let nobody talk you out of nothing. Don't let nobody throw speed bumps in your way without you being quick on your feet and have on a pair of Nikes and jump over that hurdle and keep it running. Don't let nobody do it. I had so many people say some crap to me. And it's like, what you care anyway? Things happen. Mishaps happen. Miscommunications happen. All of that. All of that happens. But for real? All right. Wash my hands. Literally. Wash my hands. Half of me don't even give a damn about any kind of miscommunication or lack of communication. That's just, sometimes it's just straight up BS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna be great. I don't give a damn. I'm gonna be great. Where my pen at? Mm-mm. Not the kid. to calm down because I'm I've got a slight tremor a slight tremor hand ain't steady hmm. I'll be all right okay 
150. Hmm, almost goes past it. Okay. Side we working on today. One, two, three, four, five, six. Even on the left. A little further out from the belly button. I want to go in the same spot I did earlier. And this is when I usually tell myself the lie. Remember I talked to you guys about the lie. I don't need nobody. I can do this myself. Lies. Looking for a teardrop. Not mine, this one. You do need people. You do. Every now and again. May not be all the time. May not be often. And you may not ask for too much, but you need people. And this time I, I can't I can't get twisted in a lie. Because it's a lie. I do need somebody. I need somebody to pick me up, take me to my procedures, wait, and then take me back home. And I'm gonna find me somebody. Because it's going to come to me. I'm going to try not to act too pissed and crazy and go off because, you know, when it's fixed, you know, you don't want to look like a fool. Oh, you know, once people do me a certain way, I just cut them off. Well, you know, sometimes things happen. You know, you just can't cut people off. You know? All right. And what I can't stand the most is when somebody pushes it back on me. Well, you didn't say, and I didn't, and you tried, and you shoulda, and I why, and it ain't no big. No, I said, what we're not gonna do is play some man ticks. I'm gonna play that. Nope. I ain't going. I wanted to talk to you guys about um, another part of my process, maybe the how I chose the donor, perhaps um, how I uh, came to my decision. I was gonna perhaps talk about um, the get me realizing how I truly have worked hard to get over um, my anxiety and my me being petrified of needles. So I'll get to it at some point. Um, so now that I've given myself the file of stem and I've vented a little bit, um, I'm going to take a break and um, I'm going to start over with another entry, part three, and I'll see you guys shortly. Be right back.